So this section is on enrosques and lapises. Enrosques meaning corkscrew, and lapis meaning pencil, or like drawing with your foot. You want to practice these on your own, both as a leader and as a follower, before you try to execute them with someone, because balance becomes an issue pretty quick. So an exercise you can do, um, both as a leader or as a follower, is take a front step with your left. You're going to do a back and rosque by tucking your right foot behind. You want to tuck the entire leg behind doing a pivot and changing weight. From here, the weight change, you can practice your lapis, and then you can repeat. So if I do it from this angle here, I take a forward step, enrosque, change weight as I finish the enrosque, and move into the lapis. You can also just practice the enrosque or lapis by itself. The lapis you can start by just making circles, and you can also see that my upper body is engaged in this movement. There's a little bit of cross body that happens. Once you get that, you start adding a little bit of pivot to your lapis. Right? And once you get the lapis down, you can just practice the enrosque, stepping forward, torquing your upper body, tucking behind, changing weight as you finish the enrosque. Sometimes the back enrosque will finish without the weight change, so you want to be able to do that as well. We also have front enrosques, and there's two different ways to do those. To first torque into your pivot, then tuck in front. Right? So in this case, I'm taking the step. I'm planting the foot like this with an open knee and putting the toe right in the middle of the other foot. Now, I'm only going to be pivoting on the left foot. And when I'm in the pivot, I'm going to be closing my knee so I end up in a tucked position. From this point, you can either change weight to take a back step or not change weight and take a forward step. So you can practice that on both sides. Again, we're here tucking and pivoting. You could practice it in just a front ocho, right? But it's very important that we tuck the foot before pivoting. So if Jenna shows us here, she tucks, goes into the pivot. All right, so we have our front and our back in rosques. A little sequence that we can use then is to start off with a media vuelta, send her, sacada here with my left, do the enrosque during her open step, change weight, and then as she starts on the backside forward, execute the lapis and end it with a parada. All right, so we'll show you again from a different angle. What's important through all this is the synchronization of your adornments as a leader to your followers Molinete. So right here, the saccada happening on her front cross you want to give her the pivot and the lead for her sidestep while you still have your feet anchored. And as soon as you feel like she is, she's pivoted and sent into that sidestep, you're going to release and change weight. Now again, we're at a fixed point. I'm going to pivot her, send her, and I'm not going to pivot until she's almost done with her, with her molinete. Right? From this position at the parada, I want to make sure that I have a lot of cross-body torque that's going to give her the pivot necessary to step over my foot. In terms of the rhythm, for the leaders, it's going to be slow, 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 lapis, and going through. So the leader is spending more time sort of on one foot. For the followers, we're going to be sending the followers on slow, quick, quick, slow, slow, quick, quick, slow, to the parada, using the default timing of the molinete.